It is winter, 1940. A Finnish soldier looks down the road from the protection of his bunker, waiting for the Soviet attack he knows is on the way. A distinctive roar of a tank engine is heard coming around the road's turn. As he watches it turn towards him, he and his fellow soldiers man the anti-tank gun. The first shot flies off the vehicle's massive turret. The turret starts to turn towards him as he hurriedly reloads the gun. He fires again to no effect. The massive gun stares him down, and within seconds, the bunker is nothing more than rubble. The Russo-Finnish war showed the capabilities of the KV-1. However, its firepower came up lacking. With only a 76mm gun, it was reliable, but when it came to, against fortified emplacements, it simply could not break through. This became a major problem as Soviet forces inched their way towards the Finnish Mannerheim line. Thus, the KV-2 project was born. The KV-2 was first developed in 1939. The first design to be finished was the SU-100Y. It was rejected because of the lack of ammunition for its 130mm naval gun and the guns themselves. There were two more uncompleted prototypes which we won't cover here as they aren't very interesting. The design that was chosen had a 156mm howitzer cannon and two machine guns on a KV-1 chassis. The massive gun was housed in a box-shaped turret. This massive turret made the tank 16 feet tall. This made the tank very top heavy as the turret weighed in at 14 tons. With this weight, the turret ring of the tank was under massive strain, making it to take 36 seconds for the turret to complete a full rotation, as well as having problems traversing if it was not on even ground. The turret also had a tendency to slide to the vehicle's lowest point. The pros of the KV-2 was its massive 156mm gun and its immense armor, with the turret having 110mm or 4.33 inches in front armor, and 75mm or 2.95 inches in side armor. The KV-2 also required 7 men to fight at full efficiency. Due to its strength, the KV-2 was nicknamed Dreadnought by its crews. Unfortunately for Stalin, the tank was completed too late to be used against the Mannerheim line. However, it was still used against some remaining Finnish bunkers. The Finnish anti-tank gunners reportedly stopped firing after only a few shots that did not penetrate the tank's armor. This was most likely because the Finns were almost completely out of ammunition by the end of the war. At the beginning of World War II, over 200 KV-2s had been built and they proved almost invulnerable even when terrifyingly close. The only hope their enemies had was to disable the tank by shooting out its tracks and hoping the crew would abandon it. Its strength was shown when in 1941, 20 KV-2s held off an attack by the 6th Panzer Division which contained over 100 enemy vehicles. They were only destroyed when they had fired their last shot. However, the strength came at a cost. The KV-2's weight ranged from 60 to 65 tons. This limited its movement to a sluggish 15 miles per hour. There were also endless transmission failures due to its size. The gun, when fired, caused the entire vehicle to vibrate. This could damage the engine or almost any other part of the vehicle. The recoil of the gun could also jam the turret ring. With its role as a breakthrough tank, they commonly met their fates not in glory but by a simple anti-tank mine. Most of the KV-2's casualties were due to breakdowns or lack of fuel, in which case the tank had to be abandoned. The KV-2 shocked the Germans during Operation Barbarossa as it proved almost unstoppable in combat. Somewhat comically, the KV-2 proved most effective when in a fortified position, becoming the bunker it was made to destroy. The KV-2 was ultimately terrifying, but suffered a heap of reliability problems. It was comically easy to spot and required a ladder for the crew to scale. At the same time, it was petrifying to face with armor that made it basically invincible. Sadly, the ultimate bunker buster was cancelled during Soviet production streamlining after the shock of the German invasion. There is only one remaining KV-2 at the Central Museum of the Armed Forces in Moscow. The KV-2 is remembered best by tank enthusiasts due to the rise of modern tank games. Well, that was the history of the KV-2. It sure had some bumps and bruises, but some terrifying specs. As always, if you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe so that we can keep creating even more and better videos in the future. Thanks for watching and have a great day.